Pie Baking Family, I'm Emily and this is Pie Dreams. And in this video, I'm gonna show you how to make one of my favorite cakes, coffee walnut cake, a fabulous old fashioned rustic layer cake. Let's get started. This recipe calls for half a cup of toasted walnut pieces, one cup of unsalted butter, eight ounces of granulated sugar, one and two thirds cup all purpose flour, one tablespoon baking powder, half a teaspoon of salt, four eggs, two tablespoons of milk, and two tablespoons of strong coffee. We will be dividing this batter in between two eight inch round cake pans, and we will prepare those pans by lightly greasing and lining with parchment round paper. To start, we're gonna roast our walnut pieces in a 350 degree oven just until they get nice and aromatic so we get all of those oils released. Then we're gonna grind up our walnuts. Now that I've finally ground my walnuts in a food processor, I'm gonna combine them with eight ounces of sugar and a cup of butter in a stand mixer bowl. Using the paddle attachment, we're going to beat the butter, sugar, and finely ground walnut pieces on medium for about two to three minutes on our mixer. Now that I've creamed my butter, sugar, and finely ground walnuts, I'm gonna return my bowl with the paddle attachment to the stand mixer, and I'm going to add in my dry ingredients, my flour, baking powder, and salt, and alternate with my eggs. I now have a lovely smooth batter. I'm going to add my two tablespoons of coffee and just enough milk to make a nice soft dropping consistency batter. I now have a luscious drop, soft drop consistency batter. Uh, my cake batter is ready to go into its prepared pans. Evenly divide the batter between your prepared cake pans. This recipe calls for using two eight inch cake rounds. Here I am using two six inch cake rounds and putting the remainder of the batter in a four inch round to make a baby cake. Using a spatula, evenly distribute the batter among your cake pan so your batter is nice and level. Bake your cakes in a 350 degree preheated oven for 25 minutes or until a toothpick inserted in the middle comes out clean. Let cool completely on a wire rack, remove parchment and wrap in saran wrap to store overnight before filling. Now that our two layers of cake are fully cooled and have rested overnight, we're gonna trim them. Um, if it's a little bit dome, you're gonna need to flatten them off a bit. Uh, before we make our buttercream and fill it. So let's get to it. Serrated knife, hand on top, and level across. Level cake, snacks. Now our cakes are ready to be filled with buttercream. Today I'm gonna to be finishing my cakes in an old fashioned rustic look, which means I'm just gonna put buttercream in between the layers and on top and leave the sides naked. And by doing so, it gives it a nice rustic old fashioned charm. Um, because I'm doing it that way, it means I don't need to necessarily chill my cake right now. I can go straight to the um, stand mixer and make my buttercream. So let's do it. This recipe calls for a classic American buttercream consisting of three simple ingredients, butter, powdered sugar, and coffee. We're gonna start by taking six ounces of unsalted European style butter in our mixing bowl and using the paddle attachment, we're going to slowly combine and then whip up to a higher speed until it gets nice and airy and fluffy, our two and a half cups of powdered sugar. After creaming together the butter and the sugar for about two to three minutes, um, my buttercream has already started to get nice and light and fluffy. Um, it's got the yellow color of it has gotten paler as more and more air has gotten incorporated and now it's time to add in our flavoring which in this case is two tablespoons of strong coffee room temperature. We don't want to melt that butter. After adding the coffee little at a time I slowly increase the speed and continue to beat my buttercream on a medium high for about two to three minutes until it got really nice and airy. You can see it even started to make uh, almost like peaks because so much air had been incorporated, which is great. It adds nice fluffy and lightness to it. 
So now we're ready to ice our cake. Yay! All right, I take my first layer of cake and put it on the bottom. And again, mind you, we've only made enough buttercream to do the middle and the top. If you'd like to cover the entire uh, cake, then I would go ahead and double this buttercream. Use an offset spatula or a butter knife to spread your buttercream. I'm gonna place my second layer right on top, trying to center it. Using a large offset spatula, you are going to make swooshing back and forth motions um, to spread the frosting to the edge of the cake just so that it hangs over the edge. Using a small offset spatula, I go around the edges and clean up the middle layer so it doesn't squish out too much. I'm gonna finish by topping with some walnut halves. You can also sprinkle with some cocoa powder or some coffee granules. I did sprinkle a few coffee granules into the buttercream just to give it a little more textured look. And voila, our coffee walnut cake is ready to enjoy. This cake keeps well at room temperature for two days. If your kitchen is too hot or you want to keep the cake longer, store in the refrigerator lightly draped with foil. Thanks for watching everyone. Check out my other baking recipes and be sure to subscribe to my channel to get the most up-to-date recipes and videos. Happy baking, enjoy.